yes sir yes sir yes sir okay so this is the chapter from uh, pharmacotherapeutics 3 the anxiety disorders so last class we have completed uh, schizophrenia affective disorders parkinson's disease right and uh, this is the chapter anxiety disorders uh, in the neuropsychiatric uh, system so it's uh, one of the very important uh, disorder in this chap is uh, chapter the anxiety disorders we say like the word itself the anxiety it's uh, one of the you can say that uh, the expressions of an uh, human being the anxious okay so in our daily life every one of us will experience uh, the anxiety the anxious moments but if it is sustains for very long time or very frequently reoccur in any persons then we can uh, classify that persons uh, having uh, an anxiety disorders and in talking about this disease uh can say that this orders so it is a uh, multiple uh, uh the diseases are involved here we will talk about uh, general anxiety disorders panic disorders obsessive obsessive compulsive disorders and uh, there are so many unclassified uh, uh, dis disorder diseases are involved under this but uh, specifically we'll talk about uh, importantly few diseases which comes under the anxiety disorders so in this chapter uh, we'll be talking about uh, some introduction on the anxiety the definition and how it is called uh, how we classify as anxiety disorders also there are as i told like types of anxiety disorders which uh, usually uh, uh, many types even the treatment on the management uh, of the anxiety uh, depends upon the types of uh, uh, anxiety and third one is uh, neurobiology uh, it's one of the very important aspect in anxiety disorders so as i told it uh, this anxiety disorders comes under neuropsychiatry system so a lot of uh, neurological systems are involved in causing this uh, anxiety disorders so there are different models as you know like uh, the gaba septos model fire drug tryptamine model norepinephrine model so and also there are uh, other various uh, sites in the brain which are responsible for uh, causing the anxiety disorders so we will study about that the next uh, is a symptomatology what are the symptoms specifically seen in uh, uh, type of uh, anxiety disorder and very importantly the management so as like any other management here we classify again into pharmacological and also non pharmacological mm, as you know like uh, we have very restricted class of drugs we use here and non pharmacological also plays a very important role um, more than the pharmacological in such kind of uh, disorders and also we see that any recent advances in the management of this disease drugs and uh, the 
new therapies coming into uh, in the treatment of anxiety disorders. So first we'll go into the inter introduction, anxiety. So the word itself uh, is so uh, uh, knows like uh, pronounce like uh, more of anxious that is an uh, excitatory behavior. So it's known as diffuse, unpleasant, highly unpleasant. So usually it's an any uh, behavior if it is over expressed or over anxious, then we call it as the anxiety. And also it's a vague feeling, especially any times of any apprehensions. And this is always uh, accompanied by one or more, uh, even the voluntary uh, movements also is, can be seen. You see that even a person, the other person becomes anxious or not, we can easily identify by his expressions, body movements, sensations, and all those things. So that's what we hear, like sensations like palpitations, perspirations, headache, is all one, or accompanied by the anxiety. And uh, as you know, like uh, since very long time, the philosophers, thinkers, they always have uh, this kind of written. It's a documented documentation is there on the anxiety in human life and experience. And also, it's uh, one of the very uh, the exploring area for the scientist to see, like uh, what is the uh, major mechanisms or psychobiology involved in the causing of this anxious. Even though we have uh, many number of hypotheses, models to explain why anxious anxiety can happen, but still there is no proper uh, exact mechanisms and why, why it comes and all those things. And also the management, also the exploration is much required here. And come to the definition. This is what uh, the exact definition of uh, anxiety. So it's nothing but uh, it's a feeling of apprehension. So you can see the word here, the apprehension, where uh, the discomfort, okay, and uh, as I told, over excitations. And it's also caused by anticipation of danger. Okay, so it's, uh, see, it's, uh, you can also say why people are anxious or anxiety. It's also like a defensive mechanism. Okay, so any kind of uh, dangers, uh, uh, the body senses any kind of danger then it becomes more of anxious, that is become more uh, the excited. So it can, the stimuli can be an internal or an external source. So we, in, we see any kind of, you say like wild animals suddenly become very anxious, you know, and or you have any kind of feelings, the, then also internally, then it may come, you also can become the anxious. So that's how the internal or external stimuli can cause the feeling of apprehensions. And uh, it's also defined like as an emotional state. Definitely it's an uh, emotional uh, uh, sign. So caused by perception of it could be in real because some real incidents happen or, or something is going on currently around you, maybe internal, externally. That's why this state of emotion is there. Or also perceived. Perceived is sense uh, you predict it's not the real one, or it could be like many times uh, the exams are there and uh, students becomes more anxious. Okay, So even though studied well, it's a perceived danger that threatens the security of an individual. So anxiety when, uh, in the human beings, it usually um, uh, reduces the security of an individual. 
so because he will not the mind will not be in a, a right manner to uh, manage the other things if the person becomes anxious the decisions he makes or the the other circumstances that goes around him will not be controlled so that's how his security of an individual will be threatened in this and also it allows a person to prepare for or uh, react to environmental changes as i told so it's an adaptive response okay so this is adaptation is nothing but uh, which we make changes as per our uh, surrounding circumstances and also transient in nature it it will be for some times and then again come back okay so uh, that's how this uh, the anxiety will be there and in normal emotions like under circumstances of threat it's be an evol evolutionary it's a part of evolutionary so this is what uh, uh, famous uh, the very important words we use to explain anxiety fight or flight so when you are anxious the persons may stand to overdo that anxious by fighting it against it okay or flight or flight is nothing but run away so so that you will be uh, not fighting the anxious situations but running out of it so that so this two things we can see i will explain with the few hypotheses the neurotransmitters are very important in in uh, deciding whether the fight or flight reactions and also it come uh, produce very uncomfortable and uh, debilitating psychological uh, experiences like worry or feeling of threat so and it's also physiological arousals so many of us would have been thought anxious is only a more of emotional feeling type but it also brings physiological uh, changes like tachycardia the heart rate palpitations and also shortness of breath it becomes excessive so in the later classes later classes will explain like what all this uh, important uh, neurotransmitters and the mechanisms that involved to causing this and also some individuals they experience very persistent severe anxiety symptoms which also can cause any irrational fears and also very importantly the whole anxiety anxiety disorders will will impair the normal daily functioning of a person and also this persons will often suffer this is as i told this disorder does not comes and goes off but it bees with the person for longer time and also this person this disorders will be um, Uh, uh be repeatedly coming recurring so that's the one of the major problem of this disorder so this is how it shows and uh, clear uh, uh differentiation between a normal anxiety and also the anxiety anxiety disorder so in normal anxiety it's an as i told like it's an integral part of our daily activities daily life so because of our work nature a lot of uh, a person will be involved in lot of activities in a day and meet so many people has to do so many work and uh, all this definitely will bring in uh, a situation of anxiety in our daily life but here uh, even though the anxiety or anxious moments comes but the body or a person will have a better adaptive skill okay so uh, this is a problem i am anxious about this so what to do about this problem how to solve this 
so that adaptation can be done in the in the normally but also to worry to remove about this anxious having planning ahead so the daily work what has to be done if it is planned well okay then this normal anxiety can be uh, controlled and also um, anxiety we can say that it's also good to have some anxiety in our normal life because if you are not anxious then uh, the things that has to be done you may not be doing it you may ignore it so when you are anxious or anxiety about some things you will try to do it and put more of your efforts and show better performance so that's how the normally this anxiety in daily life is handled but if you see the other part that is more of uh, the pathological anxiety where uh, the uh, the whole cycle of management of anxiety is disturbed here so you can see that there is a intense means the intensity is more internal uncomfortable so the person cannot come out of that kind of the situation and also feeling state leads to maladaptive behavior so that's what here you can see adaptive maladaptive so he cannot adjust is the whole daily activities as the situations comes and cannot cope up so that's how happens here and there also the thought and also the cognitions okay and also there is a poor performance here so the person will not come out of that situation the anxious situations and uh, he, 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 that's how it makes his uh, performance very poor and uh, i can see this the all this leads to pathological anxiety which in turn we can classify as anxiety disorder is everyone following yes sir yes sir yes. and uh, the classification of this anxiety disorder is uh, uh, done by an international body called as uh, dsm so dsm is nothing but uh, diagnostic and statistical manual of mental disorder so this itself will uh, they do care of all the neuropsychiatric disorders which okay are you all there yes yes sir okay okay yes sir so the dsm four yes, criteria okay. is the older criteria which uh, classified the anxiety disorders so you can see this uh, the use agoraphobia where there is a uh, fear of something and also with the panic disorder without and with and there is lot of uh, without history of panic disorder specific phobia social phobia and ocd ocd is nothing but uh, obsessive compulsive disorder you have a separate chapter in your syllabus so i'll be covering this ocd separately and also ptsd post traumatic uh, the disorders okay and also the acute stress disorder and this was a classification of dsm 4 so which is now outdated uh one and in 2013 and uh, new classification has come uh with the dsm 5 okay so so now we are using the dsm 5 criteria so this is the 
DSM-5 criteria. There was a lot of changes to DSM-4 criteria. We can see that they unlinked the panic disorder and agoraphobia. Earlier it was combined, these two, and now it is uh, considered as separate classification. And also uh, OCD, PTSD, and acute stress disorder, not much longer included in this classification. But because your syllabus talks about that, and we have to include. And also the panic attack uh, has made as a separate specifier. So this was the major changes. So you can see the classification as per DSM-5. There is a separation anxiety disorder. Selective mutism, especially talk of mutism talks about the speech issues, the specific phobia, social anxiety disorder, panic disorder, panic attack, agoraphobia. These are all the new terminologies they have included along with the selective mutism. And other thing is generalized anxiety disorder, substance or medication induced anxiety disorder and anxiety disorder due to another medical condition and also other specified anxiety disorder non-specified anxiety disorder so this is how the dsm-5 uh, classifies the anxiety disorders now we'll go to the very interesting part of this uh, uh, the uh, chapter that's the neurobiology of uh, anxiety disorders. So, as I told, like uh, there are two components, main components, this anxiety disorder. So, one is the fear, the other one is the worry. So, you can see these two words, terminologies, quite often it comes in our daily life. So, to understand this neurobiology, we need to have a lot of uh, uh, the fear and the worries. It, uh, when we speak it, it looks a very simple words. But uh, for any kind of uh, the, uh, uh, to have a person fear and the worry, there are a lot of neurological uh, uh, mechanisms take place in the body. So we usually see about it. So when you talk about the fear, uh, that consists of uh, the two important things, this panic. Okay. So panic is something where uh, you fear something about to do or suffer on some issues or some uh, expressions on some materials, substances, Okay, also the phobia, you can see that many people have, even for the small thing like uh, uh, you see some cockroach or anything for the phobia and this. So there are different terminologies which explains each kind of phobias. So we're not going to deep into that. Anyone know about these phobias? Yes, sir. Yes. Can you list some phobias? Hydrophobia. Hydrophobia. Okay, fear of water. Then? Hippopotamonstrosiscipitalia. Yeah. What is that? <laughs> this is a fear of Hippopotamia process. <laughs> fear of long words. Fear of long words. Long voice. Amit kept his words, words, words. Words, long words. Huh? Okay, okay. Uh -huh. yeah. Anyone knows about any other phobia? Arachnophobia. Huh? Arachnophobia. 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 Fear of spiders. Okay. Arachnophobia. Arachnophobia. Okay. 
Any others? Then hemophobia, fear of claustrophobia. Hemophobia. Hemophobia. Okay, so I think even uh, if you talk about uh, phobia oh, itself, there is claustrophobia. Huh? Okay. Phobophobia. Claustrophobia. Fear of phobia. Yeah. Okay. So there are a lot of phobia. 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 Fear of fear. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. So you know that a lot of phobias are there. So you can uh, uh, more explore on that. So it's a, something fear. It's a part of it. Even the panic and phobias is under the fear. There another word which uh, talk about like worry. Okay. So it's an anxious misery where the expressions of this worrying an apprehension as I told and there is also a lot of expectations and you are not feeling you are not uh, fulfilling that expectation so that's what again person's worries I am not reaching the targets or I am not doing what is supposed to be done and also the obsessions the obsessions again uh, you are not involved in many of the activities they uh, perform the things okay and uh, we'll go to the uh, neurological mechanisms and how to link these anxiety systems to world circuits. So you can see the word here circuits. Here yeah, circuits is nothing but uh, there are multiple pathways which comes and communicate within themselves, okay, to complete a, a, some particular action. Okay, so that's what when is complete action has to be done the whole different pathways different places have, it has to travel only then the action is completed so this circuit as you can say like about anxiety and fear symptoms they're regulated by amygdala and centered circuit this is one of the very important concept in all of this anxiety chapter and even when you talk about uh, the drugs used in anxiety disorders also they are all targeted to this circuit mm. and also the the worry we talked about the worry so the fear is more regulated by amygdala centered circuit the other part as i told worry so worry it's mainly regulated by the another loop which is called as corticostriatothalamocortical loop that is known as CSTC okay so this is the loop very specifically uh, responsible for worry so please note the abbreviations of this CSTC because in future slide this abbreviations will be keep repeating okay so once again i repeat that that cstc that's nothing but cortico strato thalamo cortical loop c is for cortico s is for strato again t is for thalamo the another c is for cortical loop so just keep a note on this. These abbreviations will be repeated in future slides, in coming slides. So as we know, like the anxiety, fear, and the worry, different things, there are particular circuits or the loop that are involved. So these circuits or loops are involved in all kinds of anxiety disorder. That's common for all disorders. And with different phenotypes, it's not a, unique circuitry but very much uh, uh, malfunctioning of within these circuits can lead to the cause of the anxiety disorders now we can see this uh, the part of the brain where uh, we usually any kind of fear a person uh, ex experience any fever that is of looking of fright so here you can see that the fear is regulated uh, mainly by there are connections we call it as 
reciprocal connections between different regions in the brain. So you can see the lower part of the vein where the amygdala is there. This is amygdala is one of the very important, uh, you can say as a junction for various things. And also we have, which is connected to the anterior cingulate cortex, that is ACC. Okay. And also the amygdala is also connected to the orbitofrontal cortex that is orbito fc okay so you can see this how it is connected the orbito frontal cortex is like you see something okay so it grabs the things that you see an external stimuli comes here and the amygdala will process that and it will send to the ACC that is anterior cingulate cortex which usually this signal passing to this pathways will leads to the rings of the fright and fearness in a person. So it may be that over activation of this as I told uh, when it is excessive stimulated you see something then the stimulations of this uh, circuits will cause more of fear. Any questions here? No, no sir. No, sir. Follow, following, huh? No, sir. Yes. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, yes is for what or no is for what? Following, sir. Okay. Following, sir. So that's what uh, I was just testing your fear. Huh? So, when you see this kind of an animal, what you will do? I want a word for you fight, flight, or freeze. How many will fight? See, it's a question for you. Hello. Hello. Yeah, are you all there, right? Yes. How many will fight? Yes, sir. Anyone who will fight this? Fight huh? Fight. I will fly, sir. Your voice is breaking. Fight. I need to look here. I will fly, sir. I heard one is flight. <laughs> flight. Okay. Ranjit will. Be fight, sir. fighting, sir. <laughs> only Pranjan, only is the one person who fight. Uh, how many will freeze? Fly. Huh? All of fly only, yeah. Huh? Escape. Huh? Yeah, freeze. Freeze, sir. Freeze. Lights. Uh, Flight. Huh? Flight. Yeah. will fight. Okay, just <laughs> as when you will fight. Okay, you just uh, keep this okay. word. Uh, just keep this word with you. I will tell you what is the mechanisms that happens when all these things when happens. Okay. So this is the uh, in the pictogrammically we explain the. Uh, how these uh, expressions we talk about if you see something which is uh, feel like uh, some uh, danger is there okay? or someone is attacking you some animals could be or any other situations as i told there are three things one is fight okay you can you feel like okay i can overcome that and you go against it to fight or flight that is a run away or freeze this is also one of the thing Okay, so many times the mind become blank. Okay, you don't know the become so anxious what to do at all. Okay, you can see that in a lot of uh, films also. You can see that and in individual experiences also. You can see that there's too much uh, experience that you doesn't know what to do. So you stop there only and just freeze. And 
show any expressions also okay so for this for all these things there are uh, neuro uh, uh, biological explanations like how a person can uh, have these things so you can see that avoidance fight flight freeze motor response these are all the motor response because you, know, you have to use your legs and hands to fight or flight or freeze even sometimes you doesn't have any kind of responses so you can see that uh, a lot of uh, through behaviors is like as avoidance is mainly regulated by um, again there is a lot of circuits we talks about the reciprocal connections they are there so between the amygdala and also we can see the pag that is uh, nothing but uh, peri acridet ductal gray Okay, so it's also it's in the near the hypothalamus regions. So this reciprocal thing is uh, very responsible. You can see that the stimuli from amygdala it goes about that. Then again, there is an avoidance in this sense is a motor response. Okay, so there is also a motor response is seen to avoid this sense. So any senses from amygdala to PAG. It goes. the body tries to avoid it okay so as part of avoiding as an action is as a reflex mechanism to this the responses can vary that is like it can uh, can fight or you run away flight in order to survive threats from the environment or you be with this reflex mechanism does not work okay the, there is also a possibility like may not work so during that time the person will get freezed okay but again if you ask that how this uh, whole thing uh, works like how we can predict a person can fight flight or freeze but there is again no explanation mechanisms you can see that whether the body uh, makes you to fight and the reflex mechanism the stimuli how it is or it does not come at all it depends upon different circumstances and uh, the way behavior of the brain neurochemical in different parts okay so i told as i told like in many times uh, even and uh, which is not uh, uh, you can see that once we can see that uh, a lion coming uh, out lion or uh, cheetah something is coming and catching uh, try to a dog or something the dog will go and again and this was some of the videos i see when the dog itself is so frightening and lion i think lion or tiger i think yeah, so that's how it behavior okay so it go and attack the lion itself have you seen that video hmm no sir no sir no sir no one has seen that huh no sir no sir okay so no sir <laughs> okay okay you so you can see that aram say the lion will get easily kill a dog or something but the here the dog itself is attacking because of the attractive nature of that the lion is running up so i think uh, this is the some whatsapp or some groups i have seen you can see such kind of things even unbelievable things sometimes you can uh, see from even the animals or the human being so this is uh, known as the hyperventilations uh, one of the as i told like uh, you have seen the pathological neurotransmitter role in the anxiety disorder the another part as i told is the physiological changes okay so when it is anxious oneself we can see that uh, the breathing respiratory rate increases okay so 
I think every one of us has experienced, no? Yes, sir. Hmm. Is it true? So everyone has experienced it? Sure, sir. Okay. So changes in respiratory can occur uh, kind of any fear okay, response. So again, there is a specific uh, circuit or the loop is regulated in the brain. So that is by the activation of uh, PBN, that is parabrachial nucleus. So this again is mediated through the amygdala where it sends the stimuli to the PBN. And because of this, the stimulation of PBN uh, happens excessively or it acts as overreacting. So when the PBN get excessively activated, this can lead not only which the respirations but also other symptoms also along with the increased respiratory rate occurs that's the one thing is the shortness of breath what do you mean by shortness of breath is ob increased frequency of breath uh, increased difficulty in breathing but why they call it as shortness are you all there right yes sir yes sir uh, shortness of shortness of breath Mm -hmm. So we say like increase in the respiratory rate, you know, like uh, very frequent breathing, it's not, uh, does not get the sufficient oxygen. Okay. So that's what even the increase in respiratory rate, there is no sufficient relaxation time to get filled with the oxygen. So that's what we, we leads to shortness of breath. And also people having asthma get exacerbated. And also there is a sense of being smothered where you are unable to breathe like that. Just tightness, okay. Those things can occur yes, because of changes in the respiratory rate. So the So, next we can, uh, next you can see that uh, the autonomic output of uh, the fear. So, here again, uh, we talk about the circuits, like how it is this. The autonomic responses are typically uh, involved in the fear, okay, the autonomic nervous system we talk about. So this the autonomic nervous system, as you know, the main uh, neurotransmitter is uh, the noradrenaline. So a lot of excitatory uh, responses can occur here, in the feeling of fear. You can see there is an increase in the heart rate. No. Okay, it's again a uh, lot of uh, interruptions are happening. We'll just see Don't like. Do anything. Mm, yeah. Okay, we'll next. Uh, I will take for another five or ten minutes and we'll stop. And we'll continue later. Okay. 
and uh, talk about uh, the reciprocal connections especially the the amygdala again and also the locus coeruleus that is lc okay so the interactions between these two receptors will leads to the formation of the fear and also very long activations long duration of activations of this can also bring about uh, you can see that very particularly and uh, these are the physiological changes like atherosclerosis <laughs> Okay, I just change my internet connection. You see that how it works. Okay, so we were here. Uh, the change in BP, decreased heart rate, variability, and also myocardial infractions. And here, because of this itself, uh, the sudden death also can occur. So as you know, very sudden fear can also leads can be much complicated and can also bring the death and also here uh, in the during the fear we have an endocrine output also okay so a lot of hormones hormonal effects also is seen in the fear so you can see that what is specifically about talk about the cortisol okay so any more uh, the behavioral aspects expressions this cortisol level increases the same thing as here in the fear so again which occurs because of an, an another circuit here the amygdala and also the activations of hpa where it's known as hypothalamic pituitary adrenaline axis okay so I think you have heard about this in earlier. A lot of mechanisms. This is involved, where uh, this is the very specific mechanisms which leads to the increase release of the steroids, and also the prolonged HPA activations and cortisol release release can also have a lot of health implications like. Uh, uh, the coronary artery disease, type 2 diabetes, and stroke. On all these incidences, it can increase. Okay, so the fear you can see that lot that it brings about a lot of uh, uh, changes and also very complicated diseases also in the human being. Uh, this is a uh, slide where it uh, correlate the stress and the HPA axis. And you can see here the how the normal stress response is managed and here you can see how a uh, stress and release of the hp axis involvement of hp and release first we will see that any strain adult stresses it comes there is also a corticotropin releasing factors okay which leads to the release of adrenocorticotropic hormone release okay so crf is nothing but corticotropin releasing factor acth is nothing but adrenocorticotropic hormone release 
So any stress in the human in the normal being is to release to this and the ACTH release. This ACTH in turn releases glucose. And uh, there is also a uh, release of glucocorticoids inhibit CRO release. Okay. So when there is glucocorticoid release, in turn the feedback mechanism will inhibit the CRO release. This is how the further release of steroids in the normal person is avoided. So that's how the stress in this normal person can be managed. But if we see here, this side, how it happens. So any stressors cause yeah. inhibition of HPA axis in hippocampus. Okay, so disinhibition. Okay, so that is uh, it releases the CRF and also ACTH release and glucocorticoid release. And you can see here, the excessive release of glucocorticoids it causes abnormal stress response here. and it can cause CAC here. It brings about anxiety disorder, and also this is involved in major depressive disorder also MDD. And this excessive glucose steroids release also causes atrophy in the hippocampal region. So you can see that there is no control inhibitions like this in this in the anxiety disorder persons. So there is an excessive release of steroids, glucocorticoid release. There is no mechanism which you can inhibit the release of steroids. And because of this abnormality, the person has anxiety disorder and also major depressive disorder. So this is a very important uh, model uh, hypothesis which we explains more of uh, the uh, existence for the existence of the anxiety disorder. Okay. So, any questions till here? No, sir. No, sir. No, 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 no question, sir. No, sir. Okay. okay, I will stop it here and uh, we will see that. Uh, I'll let you know the timing where we can again when we can uh, uh, 